So we have the honor of being joined by Prince Kim. Yeah. How are you, Eel Grace? <laughs> I'm good, Josh. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm thrilled that you're here. Thank you for making the time. Yeah, oh my God. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, even though it's very cold outside. It is. Yes. And perhaps it is Sweden, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's Sweden because I mean it. It hasn't been snowing now for a long time, and today it's like, oh my God, what happened? That's what I heard. I was like, it hasn't been snowing for a while, right? No, you just brought the snow from New York, <laughs> isn't a it? Every time I come here, it always snows. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. So next time I'm here, just be prepared for it to snow. So Prince Kim. Yeah. Could you? share with us your passion and inspiration when it comes to your creations yeah i mean that's a good question you know um i've been through a lot i would say you know i think i've been through too much um not many people would put a smile on their face and still be like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, you have to be a little bit crazy <laughs> like me. Hey, if we're being honest, I, I would say the most creative and successful artists are usually the most eccentric, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm very, I'm a person with a lot of ideas, uh, just naturally born with like plenty of ideas. And if I like something, I will go after it. Uh, so when I have an idea for like art or if I have it for dance and music, I just do it. I just don't think so much. And my inspiration, it comes from small things. It mm. can be like a smell from food. Just, wow. Yeah, just like that. Or like the way somebody's standing. It's just like, wow, look at that. <laughs> like, nobody would care, but I would, <laughs> you know, small things. Very so, small. who are some of the artists that have inspired you growing up? Mm, I just have, <laughs> you know, Michael Jackson. Oh, I love MJ, absolutely. Michael Jackson was uh, and still is uh, a role model throughout my life because of the way I grew up. So, I could relate to, to his childhood a lot, but mine was longer and it... it also continued throughout my adulthood um so michael jackson and but james brown is more my oh energy. <laughs> you definitely have that james brown energy <laughs> yes like being naturally crazy and you know high <laughs> so that's me that's definitely the people i look up to people with a lot of energy a lot of like go you know a so. lot of zest for life that's the perfect way to describe you yes I have a lot of energy. Many people always ask me, like, what do you take? Are you always like that? Are you always happy? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> being too happy is illegal. <laughs> Apparently, right? Yes. But but I think it's very rare today to, to meet people that are naturally high on love and good energy, you know? It is very rare nowadays. And like you said, it's, it's viewed socially like an outcast if you're going to be that positive all the time and have yeah. that much abundance of positivity right yeah it happens to me all the time i i hear it from people they're like oh my god kim you're weird like <laughs> what's wrong with you i'm like come on let's do it you know what's wrong with you you know stand up let's go but no they just they just don't have it you know and you have to follow your own nature this is my nature, and I just love being hyped and pumped. But, you know, my battery goes low, too. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, so I just, when I'm tired, I just, like, I need to go and take a nap. Yeah, it's got to crash. I mean, when yeah. you're uh, operating at, at maximum all day, yes. that, that tends to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. So that's what I'm doing, you know, a lot of music, art, dance. Uh, I meet a lot of men, a lot of men. Rarely I would meet a girl or a woman, very rare. It would be fun to meet them because it, it becomes very lonely meeting all these men. Um, and you know, they say that the music industry is the way it is, you know. <laughs> but 
I, I wouldn't say that the music industry is hard or dirty. I would say that the music industry is more crazy because of so many men, you know? Mm. And, and I don't want to point out that men are bad or things like that. But if you put hundreds of women in one room, a lot of weird things is going to happen. So, so you just need more of a balance. Yes. It does, you know, so there are a lot of men and when you walk in and you're a girl or a woman and they look at you like you're just eatable, you know, it's just like, <laughs> what? And, and it's dirty. It's, it's true. I mean, even as a guy, anecdotally, I've also been in certain situations where women have been the majority in the room and I've also felt like I was on the menu. Yeah. Yeah, you see, it makes you like a little bit like uncomfortable, you know? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm used to it by now. But, you are. <laughs> but I, I agree. It would be a lot better if you had more representation in terms of a balance. Absolutely. Yes. But I, I understood very quickly because I'm very down to earth and I am a kind person. So it's easy. It was easier before to, to eat me up, you know, if I couldn't protect myself because my parents, they raised me to be a person that would be like, you can't say no. In my country where I come from, from Iraq and Iran, it's like women has to be like a little bit, you know. Very much reserved, right? Yes. And I was like, I was raised like that. So when I stepped into the music industry, it was like, okay, you know, sweet and kind. And I just slowly started to meet weird people that start to do things towards me and i was like why is this happening and my friend was like because you don't say no you don't stand up for yourself right and you know i start to do that and then you become this <coughs> you know disliked instead and that's okay i'm fine with it it's better than being like touched in a wrong way oh absolutely mm, it is but <clears throat> yeah that's my experience this far it's very dangerous to be um a woman in the industry and trying to to meet all of these people and you do everything alone like that's me right now I'm both being my manager my product my this and and it's like being at your own team you right know? it's essentially your own corporation right yes it's like being five people in one body you know <laughs> it's very hard in the beginning I think to to start something oh yeah you know, anything, it's not just music. I, I believe every product is, is very hard in the beginning. It's true. It actually reminds me of who you brought up, uh, both of our mentors, let's say Dan Pena, uh, yeah. where he says you just have to take decisive action and just go for it. Yeah, just go for it. Or just like Nike, just do it, you know? Because um, <clears throat> if you sit down and think about it, you're going to hesitate, you know? Every single time, anytime you have that, hesi like you said, yeah. that self-doubt comes in after that hesitation and then you're done. You're done. I mean, it can be anything. For me, it's like small things. Taking a walk is very scary for me. It's, it's true. It's true. I, I, like, I, I think it's so scary to just walk outside. But like simple things that people would think is like, no, this is normal. I'm going to take a walk. And I'm like, uh, what if somebody's looking at me? And I'm like, <laughs> very strange because on stage, I feel so comfortable and I do my things behind. I can be very shy, you know, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> that actually reminds me of Beyonce. Apparently she's incredibly shy off camera, but when she's on, on camera, on the mic, on stage, she yeah. just lets it, let, lets it rip. Yeah. Yeah, Beyonce is a very hard worker. Oh my God. Incredible, yes. Oh yeah, 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 she is. But that's that's the truth. It's um, it's it's some some people are very. It's a very big difference between being backstage artist and being in the front. You know, when you get off the scene, you can be. I think Michael Jackson was that type of person that was very quiet and more. You know, he didn't say so much. But wow, when he performed, it was like. Boom. <laughs> he literally owned the stage. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I, I can relate more to James Brown because he was both very social and people, mm. he seemed a little bit crazy, but he wasn't. It was just his nature. So therefore, I could relate more to, to his personality. Right. You know? James being James and Kim being Kim. Yes. <laughs> Your grace. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So... 
Kim, you brought up a fantastic point about mm-hmm. being an inspiration to others, especially those who are younger. So for those who are, let's say, younger, let's say, elementary school or teenagers who aspire to be an artist, a performer, what inspirational words would you have for them? Um, you know, we have a lot of problems right now because music is very powerful. Mm. And music in, 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 in the bass ground is sound. And when somebody jumps and screams in his, his lyric about money, women, and dogs, and how to be bad, because negativity sells, it does. People say that sex sells, but I don't believe that. I believe that... I think both sell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's true. It is true. But I think, yeah, the combination of both, you know, it does sell. And we can see just by, I'm not sure how Swedish media is, but definitely in America, the, mm. the media, they thrive off the negativity for the ratings. Yes, they do. But then you look at them and then you start to realize how they also quickly get into the music, but also quickly drop out. Ah. They don't last for a long time. They come in, like we call them SoundCloud rappers, because they come in very quickly, you know, all this hype and all this energy and all this, oh, I have so many bitches, da 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 these drugs, and, and all of that. And, so, and then suddenly you're like, hey, where did that guy go? And you start to listen to a new rapper and then another rapper, and then becomes the third rapper. Because the, the, the first one, the labels are like, your hype is gone, darling. Because <clears throat> it's not quality music, it's negativity, you know? Now, there's a difference between different types of negative music. If we listen to The Weeknd, he has, has this dark, you know, way of singing about the darkness. He definitely pulls you into the darkness. Yes, he does. He, he like took Dirty Diana from Michael Jackson and made it his whole career, you know? But he puts a, a little bit funk so your body can move and dance. Women can relate to the songs. Like he has a song called You Just Want Me Because I'm Next. And I think many people can relate to that. But it's, it's like his lyrics are very realistic. You know. And then it's also the balance because of his voice, because it's yeah. very similar to Marvin Gaye. It is. His voice is like a voice of an angel. It's beautiful. It's magic. But um, when, when kids are listening then to, to somebody else who has a very bad uh, lyric, what happens is you start to repeat that in your mind. You know? Yes. Yes, kids are very impressionable, and as are people. It's yeah. it's our human nature. If we see something over and over, we'll become accustomed to it, and we'll just keep doing it. Yeah, we just do it. I mean, I mean, we don't even know what we're saying sometimes, you know, but we keep on doing it. And what happens is the mind is slowly starting to attract what you just repeated without you thinking it would happen. The law of attraction, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You will attract that. Keep on talking about guns, violence. And if you actually look back at these people, I mean, what happened to them? They attracted guns and violence. It actually happened. And I don't understand why people are shocked when they hear that someone died. We're just like, but he, he talked about this. It was the concept of his music. It's true. And it's very interesting that a lot of new artists who aren't about that life yeah. rap about those things when they don't know any idea about that yeah. and then they attract that energy when you weren't even in that world but you wanted to be in that world to be popular yes exactly and I, I heard that the game and 50 Cent Snoop Dogg they were talking about exactly what you just said that they are not real members of any gangs you know they're faking it just to be a part of this rap game and it's just really sad and you know these are the role models for the younger people and, but we also have to take a little bit responsibility and think about um, that we choose the music we listen to. Absolutely. Know? We choose to click on Spotify or YouTube. So it's not always all their fault. It's definitely <laughs> not all their fault. And like you said, a lot of the media agencies and also the labels yes. are requesting this type of 
this genre of music. Yes. So yeah. a lot of artists don't even fit that build, but they'll change themselves yeah. for the money. They do. They do. Because the music label is saying one thing, because we have to remember what music labels are. They are business-minded people. They don't walk around and rap or sing or write songs. So their job is to market you as an artist. So they don't think about you emotionally. They think about your product. And when you say, well, I just created a love song, and they're like, yeah, but how is the audience and the crowd? And they're like, nothing happened. But he, the other, like the next day, he comes out with with a like negative song where he raps about bitches, you know, cars, Lamborghinis, like all this stuff. And then suddenly you see, oh my God, his crowd just turned up to like hundred. And it's because it's something in that that attracts audience because we, we don't really listen to what he just said. We just listen to the negative stuff he just said. And mainly the beat, right? If it's a hot beat, people will like yeah. the song. Yeah, like trap. You know, their beats can be really like, wow, people dance to those beats. So now I'm insanely curious. Yeah. How is it when you write a song, when you get that inspiration to put pen to paper, or even if you don't write, you just go off to the top of your head and... Mm. Where does that inspiration come from? Um, when I write songs, it <laughs> comes from my crazy energy. <laughs> my energy is like, <laughs> like I get tired of myself <laughs> sometimes. Like, Kim, calm down. <laughs> you know, but um, it's that's how it happens. It's just like, I listen to these more older artists. I really do. I study the hell out of them. Nice. Mm, I study Michael Jackson, every move, details. The man had so many details. And it's like for somebody who's younger, you can study these artists without like just listen to the music. I go through the songs and he starts, the, this, his song starts with his breath. Oh, yes. You know, that's how he starts. Um, and then I listen to James. He starts with, oh, I feel good. You know, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. You know, and Queen. So I study these people. They are my biggest inspiration. And I gather, I gather them like a family. And then I just listen to them and I get like ideas. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. What would Queen do now? What would Michael do? And then I just do it, you know? Wow. And do you see any similarities between creating artwork and writing lyrics <clears throat> that's a good question um no i don't <laughs> i don't because when i create art it's like um i think about what i haven't done you know and then i just go after that because i don't like to repeat what i have done already i think like if i have done a you know, I, I do Mandela art, Ooh. so yeah, it's very cool. It's a lot of details, yes, so much. And and um, when I check that out, and I'm like, okay, I've done that already. Let's do that. And even if I deep down don't want to do it, I still do it. <laughs> you know, I don't really. I'm not so emotionally like that. I just go after what I have to do more than what I feel like. You know. And I think that separates me from many other artists. They're like, oh, I don't feel like singing today, so I'm just, I'm just leaving it. No, no, you must have discipline, you know? Discipline is key, and I think that's something everyone can identify with because I know myself, I definitely struggle with discipline at times. Mm. I do things like go vegan for a certain amount of time and even celibacy just to refocus and get that discipline back because yeah. it's essential if you want to be successful. Yes. Yes, because um, I think many people misunderstand what success is. Talk about it, please. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think people think that you have to be young to succeed. That's a very, very weird thing that I don't know what's going on in the world. They're like, oh my God, you have to have an album when you're like 25. You haven't had, had an album. And I'm like, why? It, it's very, they put pressure on your age. And then we look up to like Bill Gates and we're like, wait, he's a little bit older. And then you look at Einstein. I mean, do you remember Einstein when he was young? Oh, absolutely. I actually walk around Princeton University, which is right near me. Yeah. So it's a very inspirational place. Yes. 
and it's just like we remember Einstein with the mustache with the crazy hair and we remember these men a little bit older because you get success when you're a little bit older also KFC is like an older man you know and it's because we compare our age to our success we think that success is you have to be young you have to be pretty you have to be driven Yes, exactly. And it's exactly what we were talking about before off camera about Instagram and how they're taking away likes and yeah. views like that perfectly ties into what you just said. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you want to talk about that for everyone from your own experience? <laughs> yeah, we can do that, you know, because um, Instagram is now removing likes and views. And I think that's very good because the the power these likes have is... <laughs> It's unbelievable. I mean, you hear somebody who's 12 who, who got like no likes for a picture and she removes it or she, yes, it's the honest truth. Wow. Yes. Or like I heard about this girl, she was a little bit big and she killed herself. Yes. Wow. It's crazy what likes can do and comments and it's very sad, you know, so they they are now removing it and they're starting in in they have started in australia and paris and in france and all of these countries and they're coming to sweden and i'm so happy yeah <laughs> i'm so excited yeah yeah i like your yeah <laughs> <laughs> no. you know uh, because um now instagram is saying it's because they want to lower the pressure for for the youngies, you know, but I don't think it's all always about the youngies. It's also about the people who are a little bit older. You Absolutely, know? yeah. I mean, anyone can feel offended by a comment. You can be 50 and feel very sad because somebody said something to you. And, um, you know, I think it's a very good thing. They're removing it because we have to remember Insta Instagram wasn't built because we're out there to just show how rich we are. Now, we know the 95% of these people are not <laughs> rich. <laughs> At all. <laughs> but because this, this generation is so obsessed with looking rich rather than being rich, honestly. So Instagram, they have started to use tools to, to brand themselves by looking very good all the time and you cannot look bad. And it becomes a disease. You mm. become so sad, you know. And they're removing it. So I'm, I'm so excited. I'm really happy, you know. I think it's a very good thing for a lot of women, especially. Absolutely. And I would say kids as well growing up because mm. we live in this instant society where people want success just like that. Yes. So when you post something and you don't get any likes immediately, you're like, yeah. oh, this is a terrible piece of content. Yes. I have to remove it. When you can actually get the majority of your, let's we even though they're going to remove it, yeah. your likes and views at a later time, and it can be a viral video. Yes, that is true. So you got to let the algorithm do its thing. Yeah, that is true. You know, it, it was just like I said to you that success uh, has its own language. And success says, work hard for me and give me discipline and I give you the results. And people are so focused on, I have to have it now because Kim Kardashian has it and Kylie and I can't, no, no, no. And this guy has it, why don't I? Because they grew up differently than you, you know? And, and many people look at me, they're like, oh, you know, who are you inspired by? And I say Michael or I say Queen. And they're like, ah, you know, at your age, they were like the kings. And I'm like, my time is coming. It will come when it will come, darling, you know? <laughs> we don't have to stress, but it will like a boom, like fireworks when it's, once it starts, you know? Because it's sad when they pressure young people and, and, you know, they try to make music and we try to be fast and it just ends up like a vici, you know? Too much pressure. And oh, just, what a, another sad story. And if people don't know, Stockholm in Sweden specifically is a location that is synonymous with house music yeah so swedish house mafia what up <laughs> <laughs> yeah swedish house mafia are like legends you know what i love about sweden it's like it's such a small country it reminds me of like pepper because it's, it's small but it has so much power a lot of punch yes it does it's just like just like kim <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's so cool. We get the Vichy, we get ABBA, and then we have Swedish House Mafia. I mean, you Americans, you listen to them? Oh, absolutely. Oh, really? It's wow. very popular there. Steve Aoki, even though he's not from Sweden, yes. but just the genre of music completely. He's doing the same thing. DJ Snake from Paris. Yes, he's very good. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm happy you, you know these people. I actually saw some of them live. You did? In New York City at the EDC. Wow. Yeah, festival, yeah. Oh, wow. This makes me so happy that, that the Swedish people come, you know, far in their career. Oh, absolutely. Wow, and I think it's exciting. it's only going to get bigger from here. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes, yeah, Swedish House Mafia for Sweden is like they're legends, you know? I can imagine. <laughs> they have some phenomenal music. Yes. They do. They created a sound that was so different from anything else. Yeah. You know, the first time I heard them was Greyhound. Hey, yeah. Oh. And my brother was like, oh, my God, Kim, you have to hear this song. It was like a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh, no. OK. And I saw like three dogs with three guys. I was like, what, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I just clicked. I went crazy. Like, my energy and my my body went like boom, 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 you know? And I watched their documentary because they, you know, they stopped as a group. Mm -hmm. and really sad. And then they said that they wanted to create a sound where you could feel like your whole body go crazy, you know? And mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was like, wow, that's exactly what, what they did to me. You know, it's magic. But what's his name? Steve Aoki? Yes. He's also like, wow. I mean, I watched his documentary. Oh, with, with the cake? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy is like, what? He's like 41, I think. He's like in his 40s. He's still raging. I mean, this is just, it just says how success is not about being super duper young, you know? It is a process. It's not an event. Yes, it's so true. And this guy has like a body of a young me, everything about him is like a kid. He just like, <laughs> he says, oh, I like him so much. And that's what passion does. You, you essentially get to play for work, which is yes. awesome. Yes. And he's like... I think he broke the record, actually. Yeah, he, he did. He performed the most shows uh, uh, throughout a year. I think he performed mo most shows than any other artist. He had like, I don't know, but he broke the record. I wow. was like, yes. I could definitely see that. Yes, he's like a workaholic. And you gotta be. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, wow. But, you know, that's house music, and that's very hard to sing to, you know? It's very hard. I mean, I remember my manager uh, from UK before, and he was always like, we have to make house music because that's what's, like, that's the trend now. And I was like, I don't care. Like, I, I'm not going to do it just because they do it, you know? <laughs> I was like, how am I going to sing to that, <laughs> you know? But... Of course, you can sing. Many house producers, they take um, a slow song. It can be an R&B song, and they just make a remix of it to more like pop or like house or anything that they like. It's magic. Just add those beats in the background. The doosh, doosh, yeah. Doosh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. <laughs> wow. So it's interesting. Mm. 